us today. Today we're going to be talking again about machine learning and deep learning and with a focus on a framework called Sakai, which allows us to do kind of neural machine translation. And so far we've done a whole kind of series of different projects on the channel. This project is going to be pretty short and sweet today, but because Sunil has to get out of here to go speak in San Francisco. If you're in San Francisco, you should go listen to him speak. Um, and then after Sunil leaves, I'm gonna take some time to, and try and port the Sockeye demo that we build over to uh, Lambda. So Sunil, it, it's, it's your show. Let's, uh, let's learn how to use Sockeye. All right. Hey guys. Um, so I thought it'd be cool to uh, kind of build um, and show you guys how we can uh, translate from a language to language. Um, so let's say English to French or French to German, things like that. Um, but also like the whole concept of neural uh, or sequence to sequence model uh, is the pattern that, you know, the architecture that we'll be using, which has a lot more application than just uh, neural machine translation. So um, one of the uh, we, we did an episode two, we did uh, uh, a basic sequence model, really simplistic one, uh, which learned uh, how to do math over time. Uh, or, or rather, we give it a bunch of sequences and it trained and it recognized what needs to be done, uh, you know, while doing, um, uh, you know, addition and multiplication. Now, uh, this is a more sophisticated framework uh, that does a lot of the heavy lifting uh, that you know, uh, you, we went through the other day. So uh, it, it's meant to be just used as like a script where you can give it a training corpus uh, and, um, you know, it will learn on its own. It'll actually uh, find the best model. It can also find ensembles of model so that you can actually get a really good, um, you know, prediction. Um, so we'll go through uh, what um, Sakai is. Now, uh, the name, uh, actually, uh, again, big, uh, you know, people wanted a name and they, uh, you know, it's named after the sockeye salmon that's found in uh, the North uh, Pacific. Uh, and, you know, given that uh, a lot of people are based in Seattle, uh, for the Amazon's concern, uh, they decided to name the sockeye. Um, so what else, what additionally it has, um, you know, I think uh, here what I want to go through is applications, right? So we can use it for named entity recognition. We can do semantic parsing. Uh, but let's let's refresh on what's happening in a sequence to sequence model. So you have the encoder part and then the decoder part. The encoder part takes the input. What it does is it actually learns a representation and uh, you know keeps it keeps it in a hidden state. Now, what the decoder does is when you give it, uh, hey, this is what I want you to translate or convert. It looks at the converted, uh, it projects and uh, onto that space and uses that hidden state and then decodes it into what we think uh, you know it should uh, be. So, so that's a very high level idea of a, how an encoder. Uh, decoder framework works. They're also called sequence to sequence models. Uh, just add the sequence to sequence name kind of stuck <laughs> so uh, better than me. Out of curiosity there, when, when you say encoder to decoder, you know, sequence to sequence, are, I remember last time we were dealing with uh, characters and assigning numeric right. values to each character. In, in this case, how do we, maybe we did cover this last time and I just don't remember. How do we build into words and then from right. words to the sequence? Yeah, no, good, uh, good question. So, um, so if you see in this case, we're doing a word to word translation, right? So we're converting the first example we'll take is, uh, um, converting, say, French to English, right? So 
So what we'll do is we'll break everything into words. So we'll have a French, uh, essentially we'll build a French dictionary and we'll build an English dictionary and we'll see, uh, we'll encode, uh, we'll first do the encoding in terms of like, we'll just replace all the words with uh, actual numbers uh, or, or, you know, number representation because we don't need the real words. We'll see how things happen. We'll do the same with English uh, words as well. And we'll see how the mapping works. And all this is actually done by the framework. So we don't need to do any of this. We just need to prepare the data uh, in the format that the framework expects. And that's all. And gotcha. you'll see how easy and how the heavy lifting is being done the way the framework. Um, so as you can see here, right? So let's say I don't speak French. Le chat est noir. That's my best. <laughs> that's my best French. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it, it then uh, it encodes, so it learns these sentences over time, uh, or, or rather the words and how they you know interact. But also we're giving it what the output is, right? So in this case, the cat is black. So what it tries to do is, hey, how do I go from these French word mappings to English mappings? And that's what the model learns. And so it re represents. So the good thing, the, the fun thing here is uh, it it stores the hidden state. What that means is we can actually, uh, you know, if we wanted to do something further there, uh, we could actually, um, you know, joint train models sometime. Uh, uh, and I'll I'll actually pick up. Um, l let me let me pick up. Uh, um, you know, a slide on like word embeddings to show, uh, illustrate how to do joint uh, training. Uh, but the idea is we have the words, we'll have an embedding. Uh, remember we did embedding uh, last time and then uh, we will, we'll actually, uh, you know, uh, connect. So embedding is essentially what we're trying to do is, so the word corpus is pretty huge, right? So we, we have a lot of different words. Uh, we want to reduce the dimensionality and we want to get to a point where uh, the words um, actually uh, are projected into a space where we can compare between words. So if we take like an English dictionary, what what will happen is uh, words, um, let, let me pull it up. Um, I think that will be helpful. Hold on guys. Do you remember where? Um... I, I remember where we talked about the it's using the, the, it's their learning embedding layers. If you go back to where you just were. Yeah, so one second, if I, oh, there you go. Let's see. Well, so things that are similar in distance, uh, kind of like, and you can, um, so let's, let's pick country, countries, Europe, European, America, uh, German, Germany, kind of like all end up together, right? So they're all similar. So, so what's cool is uh, the distance between, uh, you know, words becomes, um, you know, uh, is actually similar. So if we go from a distance, like uh, man, subtract man from women uh, and king from queen, the distance is roughly the same, right? So, so once we have that representation, it becomes easier for us to convert uh, word to word uh, because it, it, the, the model has a, you know, because it's operating in a, um, we've, we've kind of reduced the dimensionality and like given it some kind of a, a distance function, uh, it's helpful and it learns faster. Gotcha. So rather than being just random numbers distributed, it's right. it's adjusting the the token, I guess, that we chose over time as we train it to be closer or farther away to the other tokens that make sense to it. That yeah. Similar. Yeah. So um, so you can like you know sort of see here uh, him and he are you know uh, and her and she are together. Uh, very close by the distance is almost almost there um so yeah that that's 
so so that's that's essentially at a very high level what is how what's happening uh now going back now the problem uh with some of the i mean languages can be strange right like where um some of the um like english is very particular in terms of its structure uh and some of the languages where you can change the object and the subject and it can still like they're very strongly structured so some a, a language like sanskrit for example is very structured so you can actually change all the parts and it'll still mean the same you can't do that with english it's something uh, like subject verb object versus subject object yeah. verb and if you right. do that in english it you may be able to convey the meaning but you'll sound like yoda correct <laughs> So uh, I I haven't taken Latin lessons. I assume uh, probably Latin, given it's it's an Indo-European language, uh, has a similar structure. Um, so I'm take a I'm taking a wild guess there. Um, well, what happens is uh, when you have like translating longer sentences, uh, it becomes very difficult because you don't have you can't remember a lot of that context. Um, so it's like you know if I if i keep talking for the next 10 minutes you're not probably going to remember everything like you know your attention span your window of your attention span is probably you know small uh, i mean by you i mean everybody um so i'm a millennial so it's even smaller <laughs> so well, uh, so what 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 we do is we add a, a mechanism called as attention uh which is kind of a neural network that learns things that are important and unimportant um, to aid in the translation. So I think the best explanation I have found for this is it's kind of like, let's say you go to a buffet and you're smelling each of the individual dishes. Now, by the end, you, you kind of don't really remember how something, you know, the, the fourth item actually, you know, smelled like. Um, so, you know, we would like to you know, capture that uh, and remember that, and uh, that that's that can be done by using a simple uh, neural network as like an attention computer. Uh, and you, I mean, there are different mechanisms. It could be as simple as using a multi-layer perceptron. And if you remember that from our first lesson, uh, the most simplest of network. The multi-layer perceptron. The most yes. complex name, the most symbol <laughs> of the networks. Uh, you can just call it MLP. <laughs> Makes it sound less intimidating. No, still intimidating, especially after you uh, showed me the math behind it. All right, all right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just stick to this. So um, simple again, and put a, encode a uh, input sequence. So in this case, we'll give it like French or German it'll encode, it'll create like encoded states, which will then go into an attention computer, which is keeping track of what's important. And then we give it a decoder sequence. Um, so another input, and then it'll give us the decoded output. Um, okay, so let's, let's really quickly look at what it's doing. And then, um, yeah, if, if folks are joining in, like, hold on, we'll, we'll, we'll do a, We'll go install the code base and we'll see how simple it is to actually do language translation. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I think, uh, yeah, quick, quick points. Uh, you know, the model, the framework will checkpoint. It will do early stopping, which means that if it sees that I can't improve any kind of uh, stuff, I'll just stop. Or if I think I've achieved a good, um, you know, progress, it'll stop. Right. So, so all of that, like, we don't have to code. Earlier, we just had to, like, kind of guess the number of epochs. We, we you know, change the learning rate. Uh, the model, the framework does all that uh, for us. So Sorry, what we'll do is, yeah. So we'll do, we'll, we'll take a look at, like, you know, data processing. So what, what, what is, what is that we want? Um, so kind of like we can think about, um, let me just, so I'm going to do a little bit of formatting so that we can read better. 
Okay, so let's say um, the shares closed at unchanged uh, at um, you know 1835. Uh, but what we need to do first is actually tokenize. So um, that is you know take the individual words, um, see see um, and, and chop it, and then create that word dictionary, right? So in case of sockeye. Uh, all we need to do is give it like a training corpus uh, and it'll figure out, so it'll run through all the words, it'll make all the word dictionary uh, and assign those integer encoding, which will be then converted to a one hot encoding. We don't need to do that. So what I'm going to do now is we will start coding. All right. Um, so uh, the the project is available on GitHub, AWS Labs, Sockeye. It has instructions. Um, it's it's under the Apache license, uh, and the underlying framework uh, you know this is built on is MXNet. So your dependencies are quite minimal. It's a Python three project. I know Randall's going to be happy with that. <laughs> uh, NumPy, and that's about it. So let's actually go and install. So I have an instance here. Um, and that's it. Like, that was easy. Um, oops. Um, so I have to do that. Um, there's a, there's instructions on the GPU ones as well. Um, so um, I'll, I'll just do the simpler one for now. Um, so to train, right? So uh, it, it actually has uh, German to English uh, translation. And funny enough, I mean, that's, it's kind of what a lot of the folks who do benchmarks on you know, machine translation use this corpus. Also, uh, the team that built this is in Berlin. <laughs> uh, so, so what we can do is let's um, let's get the data. So a tutorial. I mean. So I, I'm just kind of following along here, and I think Sockeye is a, there's an issue because it's telling me that I need exactly MXNet version 0 0.1, but that version doesn't seem to be in pip anymore. Oh, you, you might need to, uh, well, why don't you like uh, fix the version, like uh, pip MXNet equal to equal to one point. 0 0.10. Oh. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm. Anyway, I'll, I'll try and figure it out. I think this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I mean, I'm on 11. Um, so while um, Brian was doing, um, hey, uh, maybe you can post the link uh, on the Twitch channel for folks to. Uh, if they want to follow along uh, and download the corpus. Uh, you can actually do this on your local machine as well. It's just going to take a while. Um, but uh, for the next example, I'll take a smaller data set and show how to do this. So we're just downloading these different corpuses. Oh, we're gonna yeah. do French. We're gonna do German instead of French. Um. Yeah, German. Yeah. I speak German. That's good. Ich bin zu Neil. That, that's what I remember. Sincere, uh, Randall. <laughs> I. I mean, I can. 
tell me something to say and I'll, we'll compare my version of translation with uh with the german translation um we have another option randall like um if people want to get simpler we could just go to the movie dialogue corpus it's probably going to be more fun should we just do that instead uh sure okay If, are we worried about time for, uh, for yeah, the, downloading the WMT? Uh, yeah, it has a lot more um, steps. Yeah, <laughs> a lot more steps. So I, I just wonder, like, um, it'll be just easier, and you know, this is more of a fun thing. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, if People want to um, do, do uh, have you shared that link, Randall? So it's uh, B zero N O L slash dialogue. Okay, great. So so okay, let's talk about the data corpus actually here. Um, so it's a it's like a uh, it's from CMU. Uh, sorry, uh, Cornell. Um, it's called a movie dialogue corpus. So what these folks have done is taken like dialogues between two folks um, and like uh, actually, um, you know, documented that. So I don't know uh, if you remember a famous movie line. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. What's your favorite movie, Randall? Star Wars? Sure. Yeah, it's like uh, I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, may the force be with you. When yeah. I don't know, I don't know the pre, I don't know the pre dialogue that was said. I can't remember now. But um, it's it's kind of those interaction dialogues that that they have. So we have um, like um, essentially our inputs are like the dialogue that was said, dialogue um, said by person one, and the corresponding response. Uh, to that dialogue. So what we'll do is we we'll learn kind of like this is how questions get asked, like or things that happen in the movie, and then here's what the model uh, will the model will learn to actually talk like folks have done in the movie. So so that's what you're building. Okay. Uh, from an application point of view, what you can think is. Uh, let's say you have a lot of customer, I mean, you're uh, recording a lot of customer calls and logs and so on, right? So there's a certain way people respond. So you can potentially, if you have a clean data set, you can potentially get the model to train where it's auto-responding to questions that are being asked by people. Interesting. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to do that, but, uh, you know, potentially we can build that uh, but again it's 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 uh, there are a few factors and one of the factors is being having like the clean data um, and making sure that you know the space that we're working in terms of the questions and things that can be asked uh, isn't that too, isn't too much right so so, so uh, this is still an active area of research yeah it's interesting but let's get coding because we we have a limited amount of time and I want to see what we can get done today okay um okay well, maybe I'll okay so, so let's let's do this a head train and then we'll see what it looks like um uh, to I'll just do this train dot a. Um, I'm trying to find like what the field names are. Uh, now, um, what? There you go. I was trying to find like what's the best way to show both <laughs> vim diff vim for the win. Um, so. It's like, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thanks. 
Did your father teach you humility? He tried to <laughs> take it. <laughs> I mean, things like that, right? So it's uh, a little cheesy and um, and so on. So I think you you should sleep closer. I mean, for safety, it's like I'd be safer sleeping with that snake. <laughs> just just fun things, you know. Um, um, and so to train, uh, it's it's really simple. Like um, we we need to we go back to Sakai. Right. So we'll we'll have something like um, what I'm going to do is just make a copy again. I already have the model trained, so I just want to show folks how to you know, train this. It's got a lot of files. Are there any questions on the Twitch channel? Nope. Okay. So, so this is how we can train. We say Python. Um, um, actually, it should be Python three. I think I do have both. Uh, so suck. Yeah. So sockeye dot train. So the next step is we give it the source, right? So, so in this case, the source is going to be like train A. And the target is going to be train B. And similarly, we need to have like the Test. validation source. Yeah. yeah. So validation source is train dot sorry test dot a validation target is going to be test dot b. Now I'm actually running this on um, GPU. Yeah, on just a CPU. So I'm going to still use the CPU to train. Okay. Um, so I'm going to call it, and that's it. <laughs> and it's learning. Uh, so let's see what it does, right? So look at this. Like it's got a lot of different, different parameters. So it, it's picked some of the default things. And it just has, um, you know, taken that. Um, but we can tune that as well. So let's look at why the model's training. Like as you can see here, right? So it's it's set everything up, and now we're gonna see what are the options we have. So as far as the model is concerned, we can say, hey let's limit our vocabulary size to a certain thing, right? So that's, if Zanzibar only appears once, we really don't know. I mean, we don't need to like consider things like that. Right. Um, and, or like min count, right? Like if we can just filter everything that appears only once or twice in our dictionary, uh, you can give the embedding size. So embedding size is like how long, how large is the embedding vector? Um, so, you know, if you have a larger corpus, you might want to have a, a larger embedding space. If you have a smaller corpus, you really want to have a smaller embedding space so that they're closer. Um, then the number of hidden layers. Um, so you can, you know, tip, you can specify how deep is your network. Uh, and then uh, other stuff like attention that we talked about. So you can so uh, have we, that. I want to stop for a second on attention. So. MLP is the multi-layer perceptron, and mm -hmm. then there's coverage, and I assume that means like how many nodes are being hit. I, I mean, what what are what are dot what are coverage? Uh, I I haven't wait uh, I haven't used those. Uh, I oh sorry yeah 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 the, the, that's just the uh, uh, different methods. So uh, to, to, I thought you were talking about so let's. Let me pull up something. Uh, 
trying to find like a good let's come back to that later but okay um, sure it, it's just a different uh, each of them are a different kind of like network so i'm trying to find like the definitions of like um yeah that's fine we can we can keep going seek to seek translation okay we'll come back Uh, I just can't. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay. And then the rest of the stuff is like, uh, you know, stuff that we've worked on, which is the batch size, right? So we know as we train the learning rate, we need to adjust the batch size. We can have dro dropouts um, so that we don't overfit, right? So remember, like, we will turn off a few neurons so that the model doesn't, like, overfit and learn too much and is biased towards training data. Um, yeah, we can use uh, like a couple of different uh, you know, loss functions with either cross entropy or cross, smooth cross entropy. Uh, so things like that. Uh, so we have metrics. Um, so we tend to use different metrics for uh, different tasks. So when we're doing uh, a machine translation, we'll use a metric called as blue score which stands for bilang uh, bilingual, um, it's a bilingual score. I, I forget to uh, abbreviate that, but essentially what it's doing is it's it's saying, comparing how close it is, uh, how close the words are. And depending upon that, you know, a score is outputted, which is between zero and one. And then we, you know, kind of calculate, uh, we'll make an aggregate score. Uh, perplexity is interesting. Um, uh, it's um, it's kind of a metric where uh, we we take uh, like our output and see how likely was it to appear in our um, uh, in our original distribution. So so it, it's kind of like um, when we can't do exact comparison between words because they can sound similar. So that's that's what complexity. Uh, tries to capture. So we we can have a couple of words that almost mean the same thing, right? Like now, do we, if we do a direct comparison, it it doesn't hold out hold up well, right? So it's always going to be a zero. So we we need something like that. Um, so so as you can see, so some of the metrics uh, we will be, uh, as you can see, I think we. Uh, yeah, so we're optimizing for perplexity. Okay. Now you can see our initial vocabulary was about 75,000. We, we just used a min frequency of one, so we, you know, we started. Them. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we can see, uh, like, the oh, total so, words. So after pruning, we had 50,000. And then, yeah, gotcha. So also what these are called are sentence pairs. So what we're doing is uh, doing a sentence pair conversion, right? So we're saying, hey, when somebody said, I'm sorry, like m most of the times it just meant that, oh, that's okay, and so on. So that's kind of what the model learns to convert between, right? Um, so source words, um, yeah, so whatever appeared in our sentence pair, so A is where uh, A and B are like the sentence pairs, right? So the, each each line corresponds to the uh, correspond, uh, corresponds to the translation that we expect. Does that make sense? No. No. Okay. I I, have, so, I, I don't understand. Like you you said the word sentence pair many times, but you did not explain like why each line corresponds. I guess. Right, so it's a sequence to sequence model, right? So we're saying here is. Uh, Hello, my name is Randall. And then right. bonjour, Thank my name you. is Randall. Or, yeah, so in, in case in case of uh, the translation, so that that's that's called a sentence pair, right? Uh, so it's a sentence pair because it's a one to one mapping of the two. Correct, the, the exact translation in this case, right? So our. So what we'll do is we will put, if 
the framework expects that to be in two different files where each line corresponds to its sentence, its other pair, right? Like, so they, they, uh, they, it, they, it, do they have to be lined up then line by line? Yeah. So when you do Vindit, when you did Vindit earlier, I mean, I noticed maybe this was a, an effect of the wrapping, but there were some things that were yeah. in the movie dialogue set that were way longer than the things that were in the, um, Right, because uh, we're not doing a translation, uh, right? So in case of, um, also, uh, they needn't be lined up or have the same sequence then, right? Like certain languages may be a little more, um, say, verbose than other languages. So you might have, um, like, for example, if you take Mandarin, like, uh, you know, you probably write like a sentence in English, which is, comprised of 20 words and in Mandarin, you can probably write that in five or six words, right? Now, they needn't be of the same length. But all we are saying is this given sentence, this is the, this is what we think the translation is. Okay, got it. Yep. Okay. Um, so in this case, the movie dialogues, it's like, well, you know, people rambled on for, Two uh, like twenty seconds, and then well, my reply was okay. <laughs> and then I notice it's doing this replicating twenty nine random examples from the bucket, and is that just trying to pad the different layers? To... Yeah. So yeah, so good good extension, good good pickup. Um, right, like the uh, our our samples uh, have different sequence lengths, right? So our dialogue, as you notice. We have some are like, you know, 10 words long, some are 20, 25, and so on. So to train them better, what we do is we'll bucket them. Like we'll just put them into buckets and train each of them. Um, so that's that's bucketing. Gotcha. Yeah. And again, that's done. Like it'll find the right, um, you know, uh, it'll kind just of bucket. stats using yeah. like NumPy or something and figure out where exactly right. it needs to. Cool. Yeah, like the distribution and it'll figure out the bucketing. So what I'll do is uh, this takes about like a couple of hours to train. So uh, now that I've shown you how you can train, let's go and do the prediction. Okay. All righty. <laughs> it doesn't like. Uh... Can you control Z it? Yeah, that's how I end it. And then just kill it. Yeah. Type jobs. I'll give you a, yeah, there you go. Um, so let me go to the trained uh, model that I've had. Uh, so you can see here, um, it, it actually like ends up having a lot of different models, uh, which um, I deleted. Uh, but then we'll pick a model that says, you know, parameter dot best. So you can see like our training looks like something like this. Uh, it looks at the perplexity score. It's trying to optimize. And the model says, hey, I improved perplexity. I'm keeping, I'm, I'm improving. And then it's like, hey, validation perplexity is not, you know, improved in the last whatever iteration. So I'm going to make a smart decision and say, hey, this is all I can do given this data set and these parameters, so I'm just going to stop here. So the model, the framework will do all that for you. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and I love that it's like, you know, uh, also the strike like, hey, three leaked semaphores on shutdown. <laughs> I, I, I'm not familiar with perplexity as a... Uh score so is is this 1.035 is that pretty good um so let's see where we started with right the perplexity is uh we want to minimize right so it starts off saying hey uh things we're predicting is like very off it's, it's super off so so that, that that's that's what it is so we can see like immediately right like we start it's like as long as the batches that's a good sign like you, you want to see like an exponential decay in your last function. Like that's when you're like, aha, that, like it's, it's, it's working. It's sort of working. Gotcha. 
Okay. Um, now it's prediction time. Um, SM, translate. So this is all we need to do. So give it the translate module, set, uh, point it to the mod model directory, and say we're going to use CPU. And it'll load everything. OK? And then we get a prompt. And uh, I don't know, hopefully that doesn't affect. It's probably loaded. How big are those models? Uh, depends on, uh, uh, like the dioxide. said, this is probably like, uh, yeah, there you go. 500 megs. 500 megs. Like, are there ways to shrink these models down? Uh, yeah, there, there are some advanced techniques like where we don't need to keep all the precision. So we, we work with like 32 bit floats. Um, we might not need, we can just slice and use just eight to store the parameters that are other model compression techniques. Um, but these models, um, these sequence models are these called LSTMs. Uh, tend to be uh, larger uh, because you can imagine, uh, you know, remember like I talked about like the hidden state and the store. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a state that gets stored, which is why um, the, these get blown up. Gotcha. Yeah. Because you can see, right, like our training corpus was just like uh, six megs. And <laughs> Like a total of like around six meg each. Okay. So, all right. So I'm going to do the translation. Hi, I am Randall. <laughs> That's that's not a fun uh, bot. There you go. Hi. <laughs> not really. Maybe you can teach me something. Uh, uh not calm. Uh Ankh is like unknown, so you right. don't know what to say. And it's like you don't know what you're asking. You're a killer, all right. So it's just like Okay, I get it. <laughs> 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 see, you can see uh, it, it does make some sort of sense, right? Like it, it understands it's it's trying to, you know, mimic what we see in a movie, right? right. So, so it's a movie dialogue. It, it's a it's a little glorified. Um, Let's go to the beach. Yeah. It's very Hemingway-esque. <laughs> Declarative. Yeah. Now I wanna now I wanna just take all of Hemingway's books, all of his dialogue, line yeah. by line by line. It was cold, yeah. it was dark. Yeah. So you're, so you're a half of dash car in the water. I mean, at least you can see, like, it associates cold and water, right? You, you kind of see that. Um, I don't know. You, you, have a, you have a dialogue before we before I end this? Uh, let's say, may the force be with you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do this. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Oh, yeah. You haven't been able to keep the bottom. <laughs> wow. Interesting. That is so a, so can you give me one of these models? Um, because I'm going to try and put it on Lambda and try and make a little API that uh, I, I know you have to get going, but if uh, you threw this model up on S3, right? 
Correct. I shared it with you. Let me know if you can access it. Yeah, let me try that right now. Um, I'll stop my screen share. Da, da, da. Um, let me CD into a new directory here. I guess I'll just uh, switch over so people can see. Um, let's see, Twitch, uh, Amazon, let's do Twitch there, let's do Sakai. I built something last night. I'm just going to call it MKDR Lambda Sakai. Okay. Yeah, let me. Um, AWS S3. Yep, I still don't have access, by the way. Okay. Okay. So I think you'll, me... you'll need to change that ACL to be public read or, yep. or something like that. Yeah, I'm just. To make it easier, I'm just uh, building a tarball, um, and let me send that. Yeah, you you should just need the. Um, Uh, and then Ruchi Kavi asks, is there a notebook that can be shared? Yeah, we'll definitely share the notebook. Um, yeah, we, we usually have our notebooks and everything on, uh, so you go to GitHub. So Sunil Malia slash DL hyphen Twitch hyphen series. So all the notebooks, like all the previous episodes, um, all get uploaded here. So I'll post the link. So in the meantime, I'm going to try and build a Lambda container. Uh, that can take all the stuff. Um, so I want to grab, okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to install Python 3.6 on this Amazon Linux AMI. Uh, L. Riffs Frito de la Grita says, uh, I have an awesome prompt, and you are great. I do. <laughs> um, okay. All right, Randall, I sent you I sent you the model. Let me know if it access. Let me see here. Um, It's a very, very large directory. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that'll download. Do you know why it's going so slow? Shouldn't there, isn't there like an accelerate endpoint or something that'll make this run faster? You mean S3? Yes. Oh, I didn't put it on accelerate, so okay. just regular. Okay, well, I'm gonna throw this in the background. Um, First, I'll make it quiet, I guess. FG. Uh, yeah, I think um, you're all set. I think I'll get go yeah, I think I'll get going, given that you are all set. Um, yeah, we'll be back next week. We'll um, we'll do time series modeling. Uh, okay, that sounds terrifying, but everything does it first. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I have a cool use case. I don't know if people have other use cases, let me know. What we're going to do is we're going to try and predict spot prices on AWS. Oh, cool. 
I like that. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Let me get going with this. Thanks again for right. coming over. I'm going to play around with all of the translation and stuff and see if I can build a little API for it. Uh, I'll see you later. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you. Uh, okay, cool. So give me one second here, guys. I'm just going to throw together my uh, my window. Where is this shindig? It's a video capture device. And this is going to be okie dokie. That's way too big. All right, cool. So we are all set. Uh, so what we're doing now, like where we are, is we've built this model. And what I want to do is I want to figure out a way of putting it into Lambda. And I don't think I'm going to be successful today, by the way. So you guys should just take that up front. Um, I think this is going to be fairly difficult to get working just because it looks like this model is several gigs. And Lambda has a limit of about four, 500 megs that you can put into the container, into slash temp. So I'm not entirely sure how, how I'll be able to, to get that model over. But I did notice that like, the params best section was fairly small. So if we look at how big all of this is, I mean, I can get rid of Python 2.7 numpy and I can get rid of I mean I can get rid of just about everything here oh man I'm not even in the right directory um, so I'm gonna go into this lambda sockeye directory and I'm about 70 megabytes total right now and that includes mxnet and uh, sockeye I keep thinking like maybe let me let me try to do something here. Upgrade numpy dash t dot I wonder if it's gonna build yeah, oh darn. Maybe I should just provision a much larger, like more powerful instance. Let me do that. So let's just go get a super powerful instance. Is this better? Can you guys see better now? Where do you? Where do you want my face? I can also just get rid of my face. So let's see. What's just a crazy, ridiculous instant size? C3 8x large. Let's go for like a G3 8x large. And how many vCPUs does it have? 32 G CPUs, 244 megs of RAM. I think that should be just fine. Um, and I'll request a spot instance. And we'll say, you know, keep it at like $1 per hour. Uh, and then Quimo Bedbug asks, can you just grab any resources you need for this demo? And I mean, yeah, that's one of the advantages of working at AWS. Uh, now keep in mind, I'm using the same public crowd, uh, cloud that everybody else is using. So it's, uh, it's important that I'm kind of like frugal with these resources. So I, I spin them up and then I take them down when I'm done.
I don't really keep it all running. But yeah, come work at AWS and you can spin up whatever resources you want. Uh, and then eventually you get an email from your boss that's like, hey, I noticed that you've been spending a lot of time uh, on this G3 instance. And I can't help but notice that you've installed Civ 5 on that G3 instance or Kerbal Space Program. I'm teasing, that's never happened. Okay, so we'll wait a little bit for this instance to come around. In the meantime, I don't wanna sit here and wait for NumPy to install and all this other stuff to go down. Uh, you know what I really should have done is I probably should have used the deep learning AMI uh, because that would have had all of this stuff pre-configured. Um, Alrighty, so I'll go ahead and SSH into this thing. Uh, Ranman.west, and then I'll say EC2 user at this thing, yes. Permission denied. I'm guessing it's still not done initializing. So yeah, this is, this is my plan. What we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to do, we're going to compile NumPy. We're going to compile Python 3.6. Uh, unless Python 3.6 is already on here. So I'll go ahead and Python 3.6, Amazon Linux. Uh, that's weird. Oh, it also helps if you specify your key correctly. sudo yum update dash y, and then we'll just say sudo yum install dash y. I think there's a group install. So let me. I should not have control seed that. sudo yum complete transaction. I love how fast this machine goes. If you run HTOP on this, it's just beautiful. So, sudo yum update dash y. Come on. No. Why did I do this? Pseudo yum uninstall glib c common package cleanup. How did I get into the state? Don't ever press control C while updating everything. Ugh. Here we go. Pseudo package cleanup. Seriously? Anybody know what the uh, the solution is here? Dash prob problems. There we go. I get that it's a duplicate. Just overwrite it. How?
How did this happen? Okay, is a duplicate of GLBC. I just really want to destroy this. This, I'm just going to. Processing dependency. Any clean dupes? Okay, let me try that. Can I just delete this with I just I don't know how I ruin an instance within seconds of starting it. Uh, God. I'm sorry, guys. One more time with feeling. G three eight X large. That'll do it. And I want one terabyte since uh, Sunil's models are huge. I mean, I was I I was in a state that I probably could have fixed if I was gonna sit there and Google for an hour, but I don't want to, so I'm not going to. And I'm gonna make sure this shuts down tomorrow. Um, I hate this little widget. Is this still terminating? Obviously. Yeah, the real issue is I press control C in the middle of like some transaction check and then you have to go in and you have to like find the exact package and uh, manually remove it. And there is a like magical incantation that you can do to to get all that done. But I didn't do that. But I think it's weird that you have to do all these steps too for Python 3.6.
So we'll connect to this instance. There's some weird wrapping issue. I haven't, so Queenville Bedbug says that they've had squirrely things happen even when you do everything right. Um, I haven't really had that in years with the Amazon Linux AMI. I've definitely still had that occasionally with apt-get uh, on Ubuntu. But CentOS tends to be better at these sorts of things. Okay, so now we'll make some progress. I won't control C at this time. Um, do, 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 do. Everything should just work. There are a large number of things we have to do, kind of. I want to do sudo yum search uh, Python 3. So yeah, I mean, it's like Python 3.5 is the, the biggest thing in the repo. I'm enable repo, repo. It, I wish that there were just a, a package to install 3.6. 3.4. And I guess there's not. So, um, this should go pretty quick. It's a lot faster than uh, using like a T2 micro. Yeah, AppGit on Ubuntu has had bugs for the past several years. It still has like some rough edges. Uh, there are portions of it that are better than Yum. But I mean, at, at basically everything is better than Emerge on Gentoo, uh, Gentoo, however you want to say it. That's that's just actually the worst. Um, and this is saying that I have to download and make my own uh, Python SS, open SSL from source. I don't really want to do that. So let me just do Python 3.6 and I'll follow their install instructions from here. Um, so I guess I can just go like this. W get tar xe f python python asfis and then what are the build instructions let's see um dot slash configure I'm not slacking off, my code's compiling. Um, do I need stable optimization? I don't need any of that. Uh, so then I'll just go make. Actually, I'll just go make dash J32. You don't really need that dash J like 90% of the time anymore. Yeah. 
and we can watch this make output scroll by. Very, very exciting stuff we're working on today. And the reason that I'm doing this is that when I was working with 3.5, I kept hitting these random errors in NumPy uh, with regard to the Python threading struct. And I'm thinking it's going to be fixed in uh, 3.6. But if it's not, I'm going to be really frustrated. Great, so um, Python 3.6, great. Um, so then we should also have pip 3.6, or let's see what pip 3 version does. Yeah, so I'll just do pip 3, install. Okay, so we built all of that. So now let's go look at how Sockeye gets built. Sockeye. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to use the latest version of MXNet. I don't want to use the, the tin version that they're suggesting. So Lambda Sockeye. So I'm going to go into this directory. I'm going to say uh, pip3 install, oops, install dash t dot, and that's going to say install into this current local directory. MXNet. Does it really need the 10.0 version? I guess it does. Okay. Well, we'll just do it this way then. Install Sakai. Uh, and then again, we'll say dash t dot, and that should put everything in the current directory. And maybe I want to turn on some more verbose output, pip more verbose output. Because it's not just dash v. I think you have to like pass something in as um, uh, as like a build instruction. So yeah. So yeah, basically now we're just doing a whole lot of compiling. I don't know how long this is going to take. The NPy sort. There should be a wheel. There should be a Linux wheel for uh, for NumPy. I know there's a wheel on uh, OS X. And basically what I'm trying to do is get all of these into one directory so that I can tar it up and build it into a little package. And then I can SCP that over to my machine and I can just code locally uh, with the appropriate Linux libraries. And there are definitely things that we could do on the Lambda side to make all of this easier. But when you're dealing with machine learning and stuff, uh, you're mostly dealing with code written by academics. It's a terrible joke. I should not go down this road. Somebody's going to shoot me. Uh, and they just don't have the same. Things move slower. They're not as interested in a getting things done. Big businesses move slowly too. 
this is fascinating. This is like really, really fascinating stuff everybody compile. Well, I can always go check Facebook or something. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody care? I mean, like, this is the most boring thing I've ever streamed. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There, NumPy, the linear algebra libraries, there are a couple of different things that it can include. There's this thing called Blast. Um, which is one of the linear algebra libraries, but then there's also one called Atlas. And if you have those packages installed, you can do, uh, you can do like a couple of different optimizations with your NumPy stuff, and you, it'll include those shared object libraries. Here we go. And then we're gonna, okay, cool. So let's see how big this was. So it's 72 megs total, uh, that's pretty reasonable. Uh, of course, NumPy is the majority of that. And then we have not really anything else. But what I'm gonna do now is gonna try from Sockeye import inference. And it worked. Okay, so the good news is everything compiled, everything's in the right place. Uh, we can now create our kind of test um, thing. I really hope this doesn't open on the, yep, oops. There we go. That way you guys can't see my super secret email. Uh, so now what I wanna do is I wanna download that model that Sunil gave me. So let's just do that very quickly. Um, w or Sunil, nope. W get. And we're 20 megabits per second. That won't take too long. And it's 1.2 gigs. So what I'm gonna have to do is within the Lambda function itself, I'm gonna have to download this uh, via S3. So I hope, I hope this like isn't, I hope I can get this in another way too. I'm gonna try in just a second to get it a different way. Um, Oh, are the commands too low? Sorry, one second here. Let me let me try and fix this. I don't know why it's not the uh, right size. That should be better. So I got that Sakai model. I wanna just try something really fast. I'm gonna rewrite this command. AWS S3 CP test. TGZ. Uh, so let me run this command locally really fast and see if I can get it working there. Great, yeah, that works, cool, cool. Um, so that's basically what we're going to do in the Lambda function. Uh, Quimo Bedbug asks, are there any restrictions on what resources your code can access from within a Lambda call? Uh, yeah, there are a couple of Lambda limits. I'll show them to you. Um, AWS Lambda limits. 
So you allocate memory in 64 megabyte, incre megabyte increments. You have a femoral disk space of 512 megabytes. Uh, you can only have 1,024 file descriptors, uh, which that that's like your your U limit setting in Linux. If you're familiar with that, so you, um, I think the default limit is actually higher than 1,000 now. Anyway, uh, the number of processes and threads is 1,024, and your payload size can't be more than six megs, which is huge. Uh, interesting. Cool. Uh, okay, cool. Let's, since everything seems to be working, ish, ish, let's take Sunil's model here, tar XZ, or X, uh, XZ, F, Sakai. I probably should have thrown this on for both so we could have seen how it was going along. I'm hoping it doesn't take too long though. I also might use a different compression algorithm. Uh, yeah. So 471 megabytes for param.best, which is the only thing we really need. Um, sudo yum install dash Oops, sudo yum install, or let's do pip three install ipython. Sudo bang bang. Which uh, pip three sudo slash user local then pip three install ipython. Okay, so we're gonna have ipython. Your history will not be saved. Well, oh well. And we're gonna do import sockeye dot inference. Uh, from Sakai import inference. And this doesn't have the right directory. Uh, Python 3. Oh, no, it does, it does. So let me let me copy params.best into uh, lambda Sakai. Lambda. And we're gonna say import sockeye.inference. We're gonna say import mxnet as mx. And context is gonna be mx.cpu. And then we need to create the translator object. And I don't really know how to do that yet. Um, that is something uh, payloads, uh, Hertox asks, hey, what are you working on? And what we're doing is we're trying to build a Lambda machine learning model. So it's pretty easy to put most models into Lambda with like Lambda MXNet, uh, but getting all of this Sockeye and other stuff and NumPy and all these other things into Lambda requires some finagling and, and getting it down to the right size. So uh, then Quimo Bedbug asked payload size as in what's your pass to Lambda, which is something that I was covering a little bit ago when I was going over the Lambda limits. So with the async invocation, the event type invocation, you have 128K as your limit when you submit something to Lambda. With the request response model, you have six megabytes. So that would allow you to pass in an image as a base 64 encoded string, for instance. Uh, I would never recommend that, but I mean, you can. 
Uh, and in fact, I do that in a couple places for like the, the Cloud Ninja bot. Okay, so we're gonna create a translator and I'm gonna get this wrong, by the way, at least the first few times. Um, translator, uh, context, linear, and the this is just the type of model that it is. And then I'm gonna unpack the arguments of, yeah. So I want to do sockeye dot, let's say model stuff equals sockeye dot inference dot load models context. 100 is going to be the input length, 5 is going to be the beam size, and then we'll just throw everything in temp. Uh, actually, the, the directory is just going to be like here. For, for now, it's just going to be here. But on Lambda, we'll change this dot to be slash temp. But for now, it's just, we'll keep it as dot. Uh, Oh my God, I'm going to get all of this wrong. Okay, so I need more than what I had. So let me just copy all of CD or CP, the Lambda, the, the model, the vocab. I'll just copy everything into here. So how big are we now? 546 megs. So yeah, if we don't keep the training state, that actually isn't too bad. Um, but we're still too big. So we're, we're gonna have to do some, some crazy stuff here where we like rip out libraries we're not using. Um, so I'm gonna resume. And this model was trained with the wrong version or uh, an older version of Sockeye. And that is where I am done. No version file found. So there's no version file found. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I can, I can figure this out. So no version file found in MaxNet. Sockeye. So can I specify a version is the real question here. Let's see, let's see a version. So I think I might need this config. Okay, okay. I can do that. So let me say CP uh, model config. Oh no, the config is there. So what's in this config version? If anybody's a machine learning expert and they know how to specify this version size, 
off the top of their head, it would save us some time. Sockeye, no, it's not Sockeye, it's um, model. Model. So version isn't specified. No version file found. Let me just see if there's a way of hard coding this. We can look at the source. Text given version against code version to depend, determine compatibility. Uh, so where is it getting, I guess we have to find out all the places that load version is called from. So, I mean, hell, I could just change that. I could just say, in the interest of getting this working, let's just completely make terrible decisions. Version. And I'll change this to one seven. Huh, that's weird. Normally, reload works, but it's not working this time. Um, refresh. I swear, reload almost always works. Reload Sakai. Huh, huh. I am confused. Uh, dot inference import sockeye dot inference okay well at this point and of course I have no history so we'll just um, We'll, oh, we'll start, uh, keeping all of this over here. We'll say import sockeye dot inference, and we'll say import mxnet as mx and context equals mx dot, yeah, we'll just use GPU, yeah, CPU for now. And translator equals sockeye. I mean, this we don't know how to do yet. Model stuff equals sockeye um, inference. No, 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 no. It's going to be that context object that we were trying to load in. Inference dot load models context. Um, Python and uh, 
context linear and um, for now we'll just go here and let's just see how far along that gets us. Oh, I didn't have the like max input length and beam size and all that other stuff. Oops. And I also have tabs. So after context, after, oh, linear is not the right thing. Uh, we want 100 and we want five. Yeah, this is basically unusable. Load config. Object add frozen. Dictionary object. I mean, that's just that it doesn't have pickle. I mean, that's like a pie YAML. Okay, I'm calling it. I will try and figure this out later. Too many different random broken things. I mean, why is config.py is calling object underscore add frozen? I mean, I, like, I just wanna know what they think they're supposed to be doing there. Like if we go to Sakai and we go to config, I'm pretty sure this doesn't work. I just, I like, I think this straight up doesn't work. Oh well, I'll figure it out. Okay, this is disappointing. Bye everybody.